I come from North Syria, and it's beautiful because I have a different people from different culture, from very rich identity. I'm Syrian Kurd. We have an amazing culture and amazing heritage. The Kurds have been struggling for many years, being refugee back home and being refugee here. Their scar on them, trauma. No one has protected our culture. It's been damaged, it's been looted. It's never been exhibited in a way that we are exhibiting it here in the Ashmolean. Owning the Past is an exhibition which explores how a significant part of the ancient Middle East collections in the Ashmolean came to Oxford. In the early 20th century, graduates and employees of the university, people like Gertrude Bell, T.E. Lawrence, David Hogarth, began to think about the ancient Middle East as uh, the root of their own Western civilization. Their appreciation of the ancient world informed how the borders of the modern country of Iraq were drawn, but without reflection on the impact that would have on the people of the region. museums. The collection really is very much a result of this 20th century colonial contact with the Middle East. Many of the artifacts here are reminders to people of what they've had to leave behind because of their forced migration and of course with the destruction of many sites of not just historic interest but also incredible personal importance, we felt again it was really important to make that connection for people who'd come from the Middle East into our local community. I've received an email from them saying if you'd like to participate by connecting the community with the Ashmolean is something that I have never ever experienced before. Since then, I got drawn into it, you know. I loved it every moment that I've been involved. The stories of the ancient Middle East have generally been told through Western voices. Who you don't hear are the voices of local people. So we were able to recruit two paid community ambassadors to work with the core team to make sure that we were connected to local people. It's a very unique collaboration this is the first time the Ashmolean working with the community and bringing those things together. We invited uh, people to a series of workshops and presentations where um, we could hear their voices, record their thoughts, and indeed we have many of their words expressed throughout the space. One of my favourite quotes is a direct response to one of the labels in the ancient Near Middle East gallery acquired, I hate that word, what does it mean? It just means they took it. And that really immediate response to that label showed how strongly that community participant felt about the way in which the museum isn't necessarily always transparent about where the artifacts come from and how they come to be here. When we had first session in, in the workshop, when the Ashmolean brought some of these objects and handled them to them, they felt something and they want to come back again. They want to see more, they want to understand more. It is, was really very emotional because we feel we have a something in Oxford. We have a, some object that belong to us. When I hold it in my hand, you know, it was uh, sort of, I had a goosebump, you know, yeah. It mean for local people a lot. Yeah, it was quite an emotional journey, to be honest. Islamic State entered Kobani and started destroying everything, 
in my town. Our sites, our artifacts, our culture. And what Pierce is showing is a exact reflecting of what those extremists were doing. I make work predominantly about the destruction of culture. This installation consists of around 1,600 objects. We laser scanned the Assyrian relief in the entrance of the museum. That was then 3D printed, and the sides of these objects are the texture which I molded of broken sculptures in the Mosul Museum, smashed to pieces by ISIS. Bringing them both together to make a work of art which hopefully will express what it felt like for me as an artist to walk into that desecrated Mosul Museum. I've been there in Syria and in Iraq, and when Piercy did this, I mean, straight away, I had some connection to it, you know? I felt like I, it's part of me. I mean, I start crying because it's what's happened now in our area. They destroying everything, you know? They destroy our identity. They try to destroy everything. If you take a sledgehammer to an ancient piece of art, what you're doing is erasing or deleting the links in the chain which connect our present day to our human history. And when you do that, you prevent people from being able to understand who they are, what they are, and where they've come from. We, as a Kurd, we are the largest stateless nation in the world. This exhibition will be visited by thousands of people and having it here in the Ashmolium, a Kurdish guy from Syria, refugee, coming here, sitting in front of you and talking about this. I mean... We live in a very diverse society and we have to realise that there are different ways of looking, different ways of telling and different ways of understanding the past. And therefore, it's important to represent those different perspectives in how we tell the stories of the past. The decolonising of collections isn't an easy, simple process. It's not just revealing the colonial links with history. It's actually the process that you take as well. It's necessary for me to go to Iraq because if I don't, I only have a one-dimensional view I can speak to people who are there, they can explain to me what their experience has been and they can take me to places where things which matter culturally have been affected by the fighting. Owning the past was informed through my experiences as being part of the Nahre network, which is supporting local research by Iraqis in Iraq so that Iraqis can claim their own heritage for themselves tell their own stories and support their own local communities. And we start to create a project team which is inclusive and representative of the work we are doing and of the communities that we are working with. Every museum, every collection is different, but it offers a model for new ways of working beyond the traditional curatorial voice. Then actually we're starting to see people, we're starting to see lies, we're starting to see identity. We understand the power that museums and institutions and exhibitions like this can really have. I never ever thought about museum a lot, you know. But now there's something inside me inspiring me more to understand the role of the museum reserving and protecting all this history, you know half a million years of human history is kept here. And being living in Oxford, not knowing my, my heritage and my culture has been reserved here. This object has been here always, but now we describe it in a different way. Yeah, we added our voice to it. <laughs>